this is Dubai, they do help a lot yes. in taking care of our pets. He's huge, big boy, and he has saved three other dog lives by donating blood. I'm not going to miss any of them. I don't want to see you again. I never want to see you again. And I say that with so much love. The dogs, even if you go to the animal markets here, they're not in the best conditions. You're right, you should go take that walk around the shelter. We tell people just be very careful. Because it looks great on Instagram. Dubai's dog culture is growing and there are lots of shelters here and people should support them. Hello and welcome to our next episode. This is Hey Karish and uh, we've been getting such incredible feedback from all of you who've been watching our episodes. Uh, thank you and I'd encourage you to subscribe to our channel as well. Um, and I wanted to read some of the comments that we've been getting. Now Sid's episode, Sid and I, we work together on City 1016, which is a radio station in Dubai. And uh, Sid uh, was incredible on the show. Someone said this, Hibiscus. 111 said, I liked Sid more after watching this podcast. Damn cool. I think this guy belongs on Sid's show with Sid because that is Sid's kind of humor as well. Then we have a message coming in from uh, Davis Christie saying, Hey Karishma, I'm from the US and I've been following City 1016 since 2011. Your and Sid's show as well. And Sid and I used to host a show together. That's what they're talking about. I even remember you guys played a song for me when I requested it on my mom's birthday back in the day when you guys used to take requests even through Facebook posts. Been dis connected with the radio station as it does not air here in the US since a few years now but it's been great to follow some of our favorite RJs here on YouTube on your show great content great insights keep up the good work hopefully we get to listen to City 1016 here in the US as well best wishes thank you Davis Christie for your message thank you all for reviewing this podcast week after week and we do encourage you to leave your review of today's episode as well but I have to warn you today's episode is going to the dogs Quite literally. All right. I want you to meet my very, very special friend who's here today at home to talk to me, Karishma. And this is Siddhi. Hey, Siddhi. Hey, Karish. How are you doing? I'm good. Is and we have um, Lucky, Lucky right? helping yes, you? Yes, he is. He's lovely. <laughs> my baby. You know, he's going to stay there all through this because he loves being petted. <laughs> That's fine. I'm you okay mean, with that. I think I'm a little used to dogs. It's okay. <laughs> Siddhi, you're more than used to dogs. I think you're, uh, you've been of great use two dogs here in Dubai. Um, now, I know you through Parikshit, who's my co-host on my breakfast show. And uh, I remember you came into our studio. We talked about uh, adoption. We talked about the way to go about having a dog, you know, the questions to ask yourself before getting a dog at home and all of those important things. Today, we thought we'd do a little bit of a deep dive into um, adopting a dog here in Dubai or even just deciding on whether to take a dog home here in Dubai? Well, if you are adopting a dog, the thing we recommend is research research the breed. Even if you, even though I'm from a shelter and I encourage adoption, in the event that you decide to purchase a dog, we don't recommend it, but in the event you do. Hi, baby. We do say research the breed. Everyone wants a golden retriever. Everyone wants a husky. Everyone wants a German shepherd. But did you know golden retrievers are hunting dogs? Huskies are not trainable. They are very disobedient dogs unless you have the knack for it. German shepherds get bad hips. And that's a cost for you down the line. So things like this, you know, research a dog, even if it's a Maltese. Know that Maltese end up with eye issues. So research the breed you're looking into. Another thing we tell people is to research the cost associated with owning a dog. In Dubai, there is pet insurance coming up now, but you still have to pay for a lot of things out of pocket. Veterinary expenses are not cheap and you must research it. You have a minimum of 1,500 dirhams of a spend on vaccinations and upkeep. So account for that. Account for the food you're buying every month. Um, research that. If you are a working you know, family or a couple or whoever, account for the daycare, the amount you'd spend in that. And finally, you need to account for relocation because Dubai is transient as a city and you want to make sure that you take your fur family with you wherever you go. So that's what we tell people when they're adopting. And 
also make sure your building or your villa or your part allows you to have a dog because people rent more than buy here. Yes. So make sure you're allowed to have a dog in your accommodation, whatever it is. Yeah, I remember a few years ago, my kids and I, we attended an adoption event um, down at, uh, on Sheikh Zayed Road, really around that garden yeah. center. They do some, yeah. Yeah. And I remember the one thing that they asked us for um, was an NOC from the landlord. Yes. And that we do was, it too. yeah. And, and I remember our landlord didn't provide an NOC. So we had to go back home, uh, you know, and, and it didn't happen at the time. Later on, of course, I met Chandran who, you know, who came with, uh, <laughs> with OB. But, but you know that, that, so, so funny that you mentioned the issues with dogs because, uh, OB is a dashund and he's over 15 years now and Chandran's had him for all of that time. And uh, they're right here in fact. Um, but you know, so, so OB's had, um, spine issues you know he's had a surgery and that costs these things cost a lot and 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 uh it's not to discourage anyone you know from be aware. bringing home yeah. uh you know a, a fur friend but it is definitely something like you said to keep in mind because you don't want these to then be reasons that you you didn't know and now you're shocked and yeah. you know there's no other option but to uh offload the pet that on. should never be an option to offload your pet on. How often someone. does it happen? It does happen where you'll have someone. Who, I can give you a really good example with a happy ending. So we had a family who had six dogs, all Salukis, and I got. I took this call, and the person's like, "This dog has a princess attitude, not getting along. You know, I cannot deal with this dog. She is just not getting along with my other five dogs." And in our head, we're like, "Okay, this person has five five dogs has has purchased or whatever acquired a sixth dog fine so we had the dog come in she was a beautiful saluki we had her at the shelter and obviously he had offloaded her because of her attitude issues which is easily fixable if you spend time training invest that money in just training your dog but i don't think he was interested in doing that got her in i had posted her on instagram and within 30 minutes, I had the Sheikha call us, adopt that dog, transfer an adoption fee. And within 30 minutes after that, her people were there at the shelter. They had taken the Saluki. And I have pictures, which I will share with you later. And she lives the best life now. So we do get dogs offloaded on us, but... The, we hope always that they have a great story. Like I love that. this story. Yeah. So the princess attitude found, found <laughs> the perfect home. And I, I remember him saying it because so, I took that call and I, he was like, she's got a princess attitude, doesn't get along with any of my other dogs. And in my Maybe head, was he like, was right. <laughs> he was right. And I had told him, I was like, why didn't you, did you, have you tried training? Have you tried investing money in that? So yeah, we do also get people who offload their older dogs on us. And that's so unfair. Because you've had your dog for 10 years and suddenly you have to leave the country. So you want to offload your old sick dog. Um, Juna was another story. 10 years old, got offloaded on us. Um, but a volunteer adopted her. So now she lives her retirement years with one of our volunteers. So yeah, every dog has a, well, every dog has a home. But yes, we do get people offloading. Their dog. Not to say that it's good, but... Yeah. We are there to help. What brought about Canine Friends? So Canine Friends started, will be 35 years old in um, 2024. Nice. So we've been around for 35 years. It was Carol Mathers and her friends. She was this British expat who started it. She lived in a villa and in, this is now 35 years ago. She lived in a villa at that time. Um, she loved dogs and anytime she saw a dog, she'd take it home and they started in that villa. They'd make calls and it was five or six friends like just doing it. And from then it came down to just an actual shelter, which was an al -Kuz. But because of the noise of the do dogs about 15-ish years ago, they got sh we got shut down over there. And then now we're at the current location, which is actually the land and the building was donated by the Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad himself. And they, he's like, we'll do this for you, run it yourself. And we do. We run it fully ourselves. And then it's been handed down to um, me and nine other women who do this, out of which two are Emirati board members. And, you know, they help us out with things. It's really great. Right. So what is the uh, government's involvement in running a dog shelter? And, 
And and what are some challenges that you face when it comes to engaging with the community? Well, with the government's involvement, we are part of, we are licensed by CDA. So that's Com- Community Development Authority. So we are a licensed shelter. Is this a Dubai uh, thing or a UAE it's thing? It's a Dubai thing. Okay. Yeah, for now. And I think they're going to... Make it UAE wide? Hopefully, it's up to them what they do. I don't, I can't fully comment on it, but yeah, it is for us, we are under CDA. Um, the land and shelter was given to us. And we run it fully. Um, the go- So we do sometimes work with the Dubai municipality in rehoming of dogs because, you know, they have helped us and we have to. Um, but that's basically how we work and collaborate together. Now, within the community, we obviously educate people. We are crucial in even helping dogs get off the street. We are crucial in helping people who can't, for whatever reason, keep their dog. We will try to help them the best as we can. Having said that, we have 120 dogs on our waiting list just to get in. How many dogs do you have currently within the shelter? I have just a little over 120. You have 120 there and you have- over 120 on the waiting list also. So where are all these? These are people who want to give up their dogs. And the way we work is if I don't have the space, I can't take more dogs in. So it's one dog out, one dog in. So if someone adopts a dog and I call them, I'm go like, hey, I have the space, bring your dog. Wow. What What is the cost um, of sheltering dogs? And, and, and we know that there's no donations involved. So uh, you're entirely reliant on sponsorships. We, we were entirely reliant on sponsorships or the events we do um, or any gifts that people give us. Um, we are currently working on a new system of how this could work out with the CDA. So when we do that, I will update you and I'll put it up because we were doing sponsorships where you could sponsor a dog, but we're just revamping that so that it provides a benefit for the person sponsoring a dog too. So it's like, okay, you're helping the dog, let us give you or do something for you too, you know? So we are reworking that a little bit, Um, but we rely fully on gifts, adoption fees, And on, you know, just people being generous to us and helping us. Now, I know we follow each other on Instagram. So I know you travel a lot (laughs) Uh, and and you look good when you travel. Um, I've been wondering, actually, uh, you know, all the love that you have for these little guys here. Now, when you travel, have you ever visited another country's dog shelter? In any country, have you visited a dog shelter? Um, so, So is there any way for you to know where Dubai stands in terms of its dog shelter infrastructure or arrangement or, you know, where are we at vis-a-vis the world? Okay. I can tell you that we are doing really well compared to a lot of places because I don't necessarily have to visit a shelter, but I am connected to people, you know, in different parts of the world who run shelters, who'll reach out to me, who'll be like, hey, you do this. So India is not the best situation when it comes to this. Um I know from Bombay and Pune, there are people who run shelters there. That's It's a never-ending thing. But in, Lon- in London and UK, you have Almaya K9, which they take dogs from here and, you know, they help the dogs get rehomed there too, especially the Huskies and things like that. You have Battersea in London. Um, I've never visited Battersea because you need a permission and you need to be part of the team. You can visit to adopt, but you can't just walk in there. Right. So I know these are the ones that are over there. Have I actually gone in and like, no, I have not. But I know from talking to people because we have actually worked with some of the other shelters, like had conversations with them, especially the ones who take the dogs abroad, like Almaya K9 takes the dogs abroad, if you look it up. And that is actually run by a member of the royal family. And she does a lovely job with that. She's really great at it. And she does wonderfully with that. So that I know of. But the actual workings of a shelter, not so much. I know the Bombay and Pune scene, it's not favorable, but they're doing their best. Right. What are your biggest costs at Um, the shelter? Medication for my dogs. Um running the shelter overheads, which is my electricity and water bill. I have to wash that shelter at least three times a day to maintain hygiene standards. So my electricity and water bills Um, and just overall running of the shelter, just you wouldn't think of it, but like paper costs money and we have to buy paper for our receipts and, you know, our admin stuff, stuff like that, the overheads. 
So you have employees that uh, that have salaries as well at K9 Friends? We have four or five employees that have that are salaried, but these are people who live on the premises 24 hours to take care of the dogs and that's why we have employed them. The other 35 people all volunteers. Unpaid volunteers do this out of pure love. Like they just do this pure, yeah. We Chandran and me, we adopted Lucky together and that was from another shelter and I remember we drove out and the shelter was in the middle of the desert, actually in the middle of just nothing and nowhere. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, post adopting Lucky, someone was asking me, you know, how did you do it? Where can we go? Because it looks great on Instagram, you know, a family photo with a dog or, you know, it just looks great. And then you want to do it as well. And then you go there. And then, uh, and then I was telling them, you know, that you, I really recommend you go to the shelter yeah. uh, before you decide on whether you want to buy or adopt, whether you shop or adopt just just one visit to the shelter yeah. any shelter just go take a look because um you know if you're if you're ready and if you're ready to bring someone home and love them and take care of them uh forever then yeah. then you start from there you know and if you feel like there's nothing absolutely nothing out there for you or that that's already available then i would suggest shopping uh, buying and, and I think we that's don't what, suggest shopping here because they're not but it's yeah it's happening yeah it's happening and I know pe- our friends itself who've shopped for dogs but we don't recommend it only because they're not done it's not ethically done over here you have your backyard breeders and the dogs even if you go to the mark animal markets here they're not in the best conditions and you're right you should go take that walk around the shelter if people are considering adopting Ansha, they should foster the dog. Yes. I know you did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Because I did watch your Instagrams and at some point I did want to reach out and be like, hey, did you ever adopt Lucky? And then you did. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. you did foster him for a while. Yes. A few months. No, yeah. uh, I think a good three months or something. Yeah. And yeah. you foster them and see, can I adjust with this dog in my life and see yeah. how it goes? And the foster period for us is usually two weeks. So that's enough time to let you know. But you foster a dog before you go ahead and adopt it. And then if you feel like, you know, adopting, go ahead with the process. Um, Yeah. Even when you shop, though, we tell people just be very careful. Yeah. Because dogs come in with diseases, parvo, jardia, like, and they just bring, yeah. Because they're not cared for. At the shelter, honestly, all the dogs are vaccinated. All the dogs are neutered. We act, we care for every single dog. And when you take that dog home, you can be assured, unless we tell you otherwise, that dog is healthy, vaccinated, neutered if it's over six months and it's stuff you don't have to worry about. And that's what the adoption fee is. You're basically taking a dog for free. What you'd pay the vet, you're just paying us to do it all for you. So, yeah. Tell me this, Siddhi, over the years, how long have you been at uh, K9? 2018 started, so about five, six years. So in these years now, have you learned enough to know when you look at a person? uh, (laughs) I'll tell you why I'm asking you this. Um, I find sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes that dog lovers, particularly those who volunteer at dog shelters, are very protective, you know, because and for good reason. Yeah, we are. And for good reason. (laughs) But sometimes it comes at the cost of Not not trusting people. Yeah. You know? And it's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to take the dog for a walk? Are you going to... Yeah. yeah. So so what is it? Is that something you put everyone through? Or is it so, that you look at look at someone, you profile them, and you're like, this person I don't think sometimes, has got it. I'm going to get in trouble for this. Sometimes, yeah, I can look at someone and be like, oh man, this is going to be an appointment that... And I don't do the homing. We have the kennel team, uh, which is like, you know, ladies like Helen and Sangeeta and the other kennel team, they do the homing. But sometimes we'll, I'll take a call, I look at the person and it's just like, this person wants a small, white, fluffy dog who doesn't bark, who doesn't like, you can just tell from the way they're talking and asking us the questions like, oh, so will this dog bark? Do you think this dog it will come trained? Do you, will this dog grow bigger than this? And it's like, it's a animal, animals grow. Like, so sometimes it does happen <laughs> where you profile them and you're like, oh my God. But other times we do know people who come in who are lovely and, you know, we give them the fair chance. So the way our adoption process is, you call us, we'll ask you a few questions about your lifestyle, the kind of dog you are looking for. And if you say, oh, I want a Maltese or Pomeranian, usually we'll tell you, hey, we don't, 
necessarily have that. But Are those do, the ones that get asked for the most? They do. People often have that myth that a smaller dog is better than a bigger dog and more gentler. I would say 100% otherwise. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 100% <laughs> otherwise. Yeah, I agree I have with a big you. dog. Yeah. I've had a small, like we've had smaller dogs fostered or whatever. I have a big dog and I can almost like guarantee you my bigger dog is more gen- is more gentle yeah. than a smaller dog. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Yeah, but not to say that they're not lovely. So we do get people. So we have a process where we will ask them some questions, their lifestyle, and then they come in with their whole family, including the house help for just, and then we'll call it an interview, but it's like just to meet the dogs. I think that's a good, good idea, bringing the whole family in, every member, and really getting a good sense of, you know, is this what you all really feel yeah. comfortable yeah. about? I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah, because um, sometimes what happens is, Mom will come in and mom and dad will come in and I want a dog for my kids. And then they'll want a dog. But guess what? This kid is petrified. He's five years old, petrified of this big dog that you want to take home. Maybe have you considered taking a medium desert dog? You know, things like that. And then they get to play and hang out and get to know each other, basically. And know which dog to take home. So you don't just go pick like that one and just walk home with it. You know, add to cart. Yeah, no, it's not that one add to cart. It's like you play with them, spend our appointments, go for an hour, hour and a half. And we show you more than one dog. So it's that perfect match for you. So it doesn't come back to us. It's like, that's yours now. Don't bring it back. Is it is it precious <laughs> for you seeing a dog get homed? Or is yes. it like, I, I'm going to miss, what is no, it? No, I'm not going to miss any of them. I don't want to see you again. I never want to see you again. And I say that with so much love. Yeah, I'm not going to miss you. Go away. I never want to see you again. And that's how all of us feel. Because it's like, yeah, we will love you till you're here. But when you walk out of the door, I don't want to see you again at all. So thank you for bringing us this canine friends calendar for 2024. Yeah. I'm going to quiz you and see uh, if you know all of the doggies that are in here. Okay, let's go. Let's go. All right. Okay. Tell us about this This is the bird litter. Um... This is Dove, Wrench, Kite. They were all adopted. One of them actually is with a volunteer. So she lives with one of our volunteers. Sweet. All right. Now, January is Arthur. Arthur lives in the UK. So he got adopted and moved there. Lovely boy. Nice. Amna. Amna is, I want to say at the shelter, but on and off on Foster. How cute is this picture though? You've done this photo shoot. Yeah, we did this photo shoot. Um with 971 and they were lovely and they came and did all the pictures for the dogs and did the calendar for us. All right, Taco, tell us about Taco. Taco also at the shelter, just chilling. Okay. April, Vivian. Vivian, she actually had a litter of pups and the pups were all Hermes, Chanel, Prada, oh. Gucci. So she, she's a young mom. So if you check our Instagram or even our you know, Paige, you'll see her babies on it. That is Chanel's cute. the cutest. Yeah. All right. We've got Bono. Bono is our Casanova. He loves the girls at all the women at the shelter. Aww. And there is Marmite. Marmite's lovely. She's older. Marmite speaks Dutch. So you can, yeah, you can give Marmite commands in Dutch. So she She was, came from a home that, that was Dutch speaking. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Griffin. Griffin is my favorite. He is a gentle giant. He's huge, big boy. And he has saved three other dog lives by donating blood. Yeah, so Griffin is our star. and he, a hero. He is. He's been around for about five or six years. And he's someone we really hope finds a home because he deserves it. How old is he? About six, seven. Between five to seven. Yeah. So he's, oh a, he's, um, he's a little bigger than Lucky, actually. And he's a gentle giant. So, you know, yeah. I mean, hearing <laughs> that he saved lives, yeah. I want to have him on this podcast. <laughs> and maybe at home as well. Maybe this is a, this is a valiant hero right here. He is. He's on Foster right now. Okay. All right. Blue. Blue, our friendly husky. She's beautiful. She loves going on walks. So she's our favorite to send on dog walks. Oh, okay. All right. We have uh, Spooky for October. Spooky is about, she looks big there, but she's about this big. She's white, fully white. 
cute, so cute. And she's got this lily skinny tail, which you will see instantly go like this the whole time. Is, really she, is she in the shelter? She's in the shelter. Okay. Yeah, she's in the, she was on Foster and she just got back. All right, Walton. Walton got homed as soon as we took this photo. So I don't know Walton that well. Aww. We took a photo shoot because he was one of our pretty pure breeds. And literally a day later, he was gone. He so, was gone. Yeah. Yeah. Maggie. Maggie's also super friendly. Um, she's super chill, super friendly for a husky. And she is also at the shelter. She and Blue, I think, are roommates. I could be wrong about that one. But yeah, I know they were they play together. So if someone were to watch this episode and decide to come down to canine and, uh, you know, meet some of these doggies or some other ones there, what is the right way for them to do that? They give us a call. So give us a call. The number is 04887-8739. You give us a call on that. And we will just ask you some life questions, what you do, you know, how your lifestyle is, because you don't want a Maggie who's jumpy if you like to chill on the couch, right? You'd want something that chills on the couch. So we'll ask you that and then bring you and your whole family in, including your house help. Yeah, that's important because? That is important because this is Dubai. We know we rely on our house help to feed our dogs and to walk our dogs. If your house help is petrified of your, it's realistic, right? If your house help is petrified of the dog and she's just saying like, no, no, madam, I will do it because she's afraid to lose her job. That's not fair to her because this dog could take over. Like, you know, dogs sense what people, and the, if he drags her and pulls her somewhere, it won't be nice. So we need to know that this house help is also okay. That's, we make sure. And if she's not, then we bring dogs till everyone is okay in the family. And it's funny because I'm stressing on the house help because this is Dubai. They do help a lot yes. in taking care of our pets. So yeah, everyone needs to come for the appointment. All right. Good to know. Thank you, Sidi. I think this has been very, very informative. I love the calendar. I love these photo shoots. So who's at the end? Who's this guy? This is, oh man, I want to say Khan. That's Blondie in the back. The one who's high-fiving in purple. Yeah, is that who that was? Oh, we missed uh, this family. It's the same. This is again um, the bird part of the bird pups. Okay, I want to say all right. And that's the boys. They are the staff. If you like turn over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see them here at the back. Yeah, that's the staff. And Pets Delight actually sponsors our food, so we're lucky with that. Pets Delight sponsors the food. Yeah, for all of our dogs, and they've been doing it for ten years. That's why when you ask me what your costs are, I never said food. Yeah, because yeah. we are so blessed. Um, Farah from Pets Delight has very generously sponsored our food for over 10 years. Do we shop at Pets Delight? We do, right? <laughs> Yay! So now we know it's going every to time, a good cause. It's like every time you feed a, buy stuff at Pets Delight, you feed one of our dogs. Yay! Okay, that makes uh, Chandran and me both very happy. Yeah. Thank you, Siddhi, for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you for having us and thank you for showcasing my lovely dogs. You know, we <laughs> wanted to have you um, I know. bring some of them here come. today, but I know you've come from yeah. work and <laughs> there's so many things to do. But thank you for coming by. I think this was an important conversation to be had today. And I'm really hoping that... Um, that one, you know, families considering, you know, whether they should or shouldn't. Yeah, definitely all the information they need was in here. But more importantly, I think sometimes we don't even realize that there's something happening in the underbelly of the city. Uh, and it's such a big movement. It's such a big event. Yeah. I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, someone's walking away going, oh, I didn't know that about Dubai. Yeah, Dubai has a, Dubai's dog culture is growing and there are lots of shelters here and people should support them. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for coming here today. Well, that's our episode. Uh, like Siddhi said, do show support to all the dog shelters here in and around Dubai. Do show us your support as well. And you can do that by hitting that subscribe button. Also leave us your reviews of today's episode and do come back next week for the next episode of Hey Karish. Hi, this is Siddhi from Canine Friends. You just watched me on Hey Karish. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.